Ah. <sighs> you didn't do your intro. I gotta do like the mic check. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Like the right. you gotta, you gotta See, give it to him one time for the one time. How was it? Mic check. One. What you is this? The fuck is Gemini you know Scorpio what? Your podcast. You know I forgot. I know that's been a while. That's sad. Sheesh. Yeah. What's poppin', man? Yeah, I don't even remember how I used to come in. This. <laughs> Sheesh. We got. We got wipe. Who the, am the, I uh, really? Wipe the uh like the cobwebs off. Yeah, it's giving very much. Put me in the box in the in the, in the attic in the corner. Get your hair up under your um. I think your hair is like oh. On my tag. Yeah, but what's popping, y'all? Uh, it's the Gemini Scorpio podcast, Mr. J Hill. Hillary Bay is here. Yeah, and we got tricked into doing this. Like, why are we doing this? Why? Why are we doing this? So, I, you think we got tricked into this? No, nah, we didn't. Alignment, maybe. Definitely. Okay. Alignment, timing. Yeah. Um, it was about that time because I feel like it was. We were talking about trying to come yeah. back for a long time. Oh wow. But. In our realness, yeah, it, we always say that you know, like we have problems, and it's like exactly we're not about to be on not a camera. Not gonna get up here and fake it for another motherfucker. So exactly. Okay. So, um, but it's I just love fun- that for us. Yeah, it's funny we that fake about it. This situation happened, and we like you know we gotta capital capitalize on it. Okay. And and, and just I'm gonna be honest from our perspective okay. as a as this creative right. That's what that's a new word. Be um, creator. This well, we both created this, but as 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 a creative, I'm like, yo, you wanna you wanna create content that 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 you genuinely love and, right. and that's good, but at the same time, you gotta understand the business behind it. Right. And I right. feel like a lot of people don't understand the business, and the business is, you know, you gotta be intentional about your content. Right. So sometimes you you being intentional might might not be the content yeah. that you really care about. Right. But you know, this is this might be the content that get me over the edge. Right. 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 So having that being said, you know, this Gemini Scorpio podcast uh clip resurfaced or whatever. Episode sixty four. Episode sixty four. If you ain't check it out, make sure you check it out. We got episodes in the like yeah. we got episodes on episodes on For episodes. sure. Yeah. So I'm like, yo We're not one of those. You right. So that? it was like, yo, let's let's do it. Let's do something. Let's capitalize off of this moment. Right. And did you check where your your video is right I now? think it's like I know it's it's probably at like ten thousand now. It started at two thousand. Not on YouTube. Oh, we're talking the viral about... clip on Twitter. Oh no, I didn't even let me check. I didn't even check yet. Uh, yeah, Let's let me talk check. About it because I, you know, I, I just want. How, yeah. how much you hit right now? Um, shit. Like I don't even know. I gotta gotta find it. All right, here we go. It's at nine fifty. Nine hundred fifty thousand. Yeah, it's at nine fifty. Another milli clip. For the Gemini Scorpio podcast? Hopefully, yeah. Another million, yeah. Okay. It would have been three. That would be three. Yeah. yeah, three for three. Yeah. I love it. I love it. I love it. Why am I doing this? Yeah, why are you doing um, this? You know, I really don't know. But I do know, like like you said, we've been talking about coming back for a long time. And um, I think some things just kind of like like alignment. You know, that's my thing. Like, So I just feel like we we just like last week, I think back and forth was like, oh, I missed the podcast. I missed the podcast. Like, you know, and then like, boom, we're literally just in the kitchen laughing at old podcast videos, like just cackling because we do that sometimes. Like we'll go back to old videos. He's like, yo, this was wildin'. And it's super funny. And then Jay just came across this funny one. And he just literally just posted it like like in the cut, like and it went crazy, crazy. So um. I didn't really do it to capitalize. I just thought it was an important moment simply because it's not our first. It's mm. not our second. It's not our third, which told me that the Gemini Scorpio podcast Wait, has always been something. It's not, out, it's not our third? I think it was a fourth. It's third. It's the third? Yeah. Okay, it's the third. It's not the third for you, but it's the third. Yeah, it's the it's third a, it's for a, It's us. the third for us yeah, as a whole, right? Sure. Um, But I just knew that it is something special along the Gemini Scorpio podcast, right? Mm-hmm. And as creators of the Gemini Scorpio podcast, whatever that may be, I just think it's important to not necessarily keep it going, but tell the people what's going on and what, what, what's been coming with it and where we at with it because that's something that we didn't do. Mm-hmm. And um, I just think that's important. I, I think they would love that and to hear, you know, we haven't both sat on the couch together in a long time. So, you know, the viewers be confused, like, you yeah, know, but- so they don't know what's going on. Then you went with the boys, I went with the girls, and it's like, all right, what's a given? Like, is it ever going to come back? Y'all be killing me in the DMs. Where, where's the podcast? Where's the podcast? Where's the podcast? You know, so... We could give him something. No, nah, that's a fact. And I think, um, you know, honestly, just us being in a position of the position that we're in, like this public relationship. Yeah. It, granted, we're not Do like. Do not recommend zero out of ten. Yeah, zero out of ten. Zero out of ten. But us being, us putting, <laughs> our, us voluntarily putting ourselves in this position. Yeah. 
we already here. I feel like we do have some type of um, obligation, obligation to the relate to, the, to, to relate. Yeah, to, and not even that, right? To the people that that genuinely supported. Yeah, since and day I, and one. I, and I came to I us, and, and I came as the girl like girl has grown. Yeah, like I don't even like saying kind of. I don't like saying um, fans, but like supporters, like our real supporters, right? I feel yeah. like we have some type of obligation to let them know. And I will yeah. say from from the transition from us like separating the the the, the uh the, the episodes yeah i think i tried to be transparent on the episodes to let the people yeah. know what was going on but if you wasn't really watching it you, you wouldn't, wouldn't. Have known. if you just came in on certain episodes you probably wouldn't right so really i guess since we want to couch together we could talk about it um yeah. you know i think those are good wise yeah for yeah. sure i think um just going into that like uh just that transition i feel like you know uh we came into this podcast I mean, we came into this thing, a relationship, right? We we still in a relationship, and we um still very much a dysfunctional relationship. It yeah, was dysfunctional but in the beginning is dysfunctional exactly. now. So we ain't really know what we was getting ourselves into. Messed you feel up. me? And like that's both of yeah. us. Yeah, we we can joke all the time about yeah. how I do this content and I'm the creator. But at yeah. the end of the day, I I would be lying as well if I said if I had anything that was like this, right? Like I've had successes, but it was right. nothing like as consistent and as um widely recognized right like i had things that do millions of views but right. this was a different type of yeah. energy that we yeah. brought right and i feel like you know just not really being prepared for that we ain't know what was going on and we ain't know how in. to deal with it and a lot of times right a lot of times it was a lot of pressure i'd be in the bathroom <clears throat> crying like i don't want to record today i don't jay's like it doesn't matter everybody's here wipe your tears you gotta go record, <laughs> you gotta record. girl in the bathroom they wiping my tears the makeup artist like come here let me dab you i'm like don't want to record i just want starbucks to get in my bed and um but we here yeah. you know and we so did it let's talk about um let's go from the beginning for the people that that because right it's, it's, it's gonna be a lot of new viewers and listeners so let's go to the, the beginning like okay how we even got this thing started the goal the well, goal. we can get we get because I feel like we came up with the goal kind of after. Okay, let's okay. go to the beginning. Like, so the beginning was really just because we've always had different perspectives, mm -hmm. very strongly opinionated. He think how he think, I think how he I think, and sometimes I ain't like the way he think, and he ain't like the way I think. So we would always have to have these long, drawn out conversations to really come to a middle ground. And uh, one day Jay was like, yo, we got petition on camera because right. it came with his fair level of comedy and war. <laughs> OK, so and we did that. And it was it was not nah, facts. It, it did good. It, since it, the beginning. it was crazy because I um, love drama. Like, That's why it was like alive. what it was, was like I never really knew about scorpios at all for me so this is my perspective on yeah, it i, I never, never knew about scorpios but i always heard of course i'm a gemini so i've always heard people say gemini's are crazy gemini's this gemini that gemini that vice versa right so but when i got so when i got with Sade, I, I was hearing the same thing and i'm like wait what for real so I, i'm like yo let me put i put a poll on twitter like yo who's crazier gemini's mm -hmm. or scorpios and it was literally like Probably like 50 50. Like, everybody's like, not Gemini's, no Scorpios. And I'm like, what? Like, so I'm like, now we gotta come out with a show. Like, yeah. this is yeah. crazy. And it worked. Yeah. It worked. And then, like, clearly, matter of fact, right? And I think I it's so funny because a lot of people was like, oh, y'all in the signs. Like, yo, I can't tell you how many people was like, you know, y'all reader. No, we are not readers. We is two niggas that is too strongly opinionated with Facts. two strong signs. Matter of like, fact, that is it. Can, can we <laughs> rapid fire, right? Get your phone ready. Jazz, that's what I want you to do. I want you to Google Gemini and Scorpio compatibility. And I'm almost certain that it's probably like zero to none. Like, yeah. I'm almost certain. Like, yeah. But we've been thugging it out. It was four years. We had our bumps in the road. You feel me? Yeah. But I, I, I'm, I'm going to give you some time to Google that. Let me know what it say. Either. Yeah, I don't think, because you know, you know when you be met. It says what? Do I have a, like a, a percentage or anything? It's so funny because you ever get mad at your nigga and just be go Google like combat compatibility? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, um. Are we even compatible or like? <laughs> so, in court, look, listen. So, Wait, so Tilly, you said one percent. Okay. Fifty. Okay, so, so we're one to twenty. So we are under twenty percent compatible. Right. So a whole other eighty percent. Yeah. So. Oh wow. I say that to say like that's, that's crazy. But that 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 paints a picture of our relationship, man. Like, yeah, we ain't really fuck Google for real. We gonna, yeah. we, we doing it out on our on our own terms. But what I will say is like that. That can paint a picture of like how our conversations yeah. and our arguments went. Yeah. So it's like, yo, nah, you think you're right, I think I'm right. Yeah. Or you think you're right, I know I'm right. 
You feel me? Like, right. nah, let's get on camera. Let's let, let yeah. the people show. Let the people decide. Right. So I was the people's champ a lot. Just saying. So what I will say is, though, honestly, you feel me? Like, just is being serious in it. I feel like, you know, we always talk about these relationships and, and, and any type of relationship is if it's intimate or yeah. or non-intimate. We talk about just having that good foundation. Yeah. And just being honest. And if, you, and if we want to be real, you know, like just just putting things in perspective. It never really was built off of a strong foundation from the beginning mm-hmm. because we really went into it almost trying to prove to our audience who's right. Mm-hmm. Right. It's, it's, mm-hmm. It was almost mm-hmm. a battle of like of of power it was like that that yeah that, that, that tug of war of power like yeah. okay let's get on camera to show the world who we are so then they can say who's, who's right, right and wrong. who's wrong and if you the think dumbest. about it that's the dumbest shit yeah. in the world right and i think it definitely played like a huge part on the relationship because you know then that that competitiveness spirit Mm-hmm. also migrates into the household it migrates into conversations and just all of the elements that go into a relationship so now it kind of is the you know stem up right. from that and you know that's not that's not the best route you right. know, especially when it comes to internet validation at all for any reason so with with that being said right so we, we talk about the foundation we talk about how we get got started so you gotta understand when we start getting some type of uh acknowledgement and we start to gain we start to grow you can imagine how it is the the, the tug yeah. of war of, of of power right and it's like yo nah we should do it like this yeah now, i got experience so you should listen to me nah but i'm mm-hmm. you feel me so like it's just behind it, the scenes we get crazy yeah so you like, look i look definitely. at it and i'm like man you know i really wish we could have where we at now you feel yeah. me i wish we could have started there and it's, it's, it's unfortunate yeah. that we, we got started we got to 69 episodes and it's like man we got to work on us. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Shit, yeah. it, that didn't even come to like yeah. a year later, to right, be honest, right. right? A year later from po- po- podcast. Yeah. So yeah. like, and just being transparent. So it's like, man, I wish we could have just started there. Because we got this. When you say start there, like, do you mean like start with a better, because you kind of got to go through it to get the understanding and the knowledge, right? So like, are you saying start with like a better foundation or yeah, start like, with like nah, st- what we know now and now start? No, nah, start with a better foundation mm-hmm. and like get into like understanding that now nah, we shouldn't be fighting each other. We shouldn't be going into this yeah. as a battle. We should be going into this together like we on the same mm-hmm. team. You feel mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So and like, I think the goal of what we put on paper for intention made sense to what we wanted it right. to be like even though in spirit it was still com- competitive mm-hmm. com- competitive right but the goal on paper of what we put on our proposals is to fully identify millennial relationships and all the strains and the hardships and the triumphs that we go through right so we were supposed to kind of display it and fix it right like that was the goal to show people like we're real we have real problems like y'all this is how we handle it this is how we work on it and this is how we're gonna show you guys how to work on it or you guys can learn and we can learn together and relate together. Mm-hmm. That was the goal mm-hmm. once we got going, mm-hmm. you know. Um I don't know if we made that goal. No, I think, you know, you um, know, fully what what I will say is, you know, like um I think we definitely uh fulfilled our goal only because we are making mistakes in front of everybody. Yeah. You feel me? So yeah. it's like and, and they, they do see the arguments and they laugh at it and yeah. whatever the case may be, but we were speaking on a lot of things that millennial relationships were going through. Right. No matter right. if it's uh, what time you come in Agreed. the house or, um, I don't know, you, me working as a creative and not yeah. having time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, it's so much of, deeper than that. Yeah. We've had tons of conversations. Well, childhood traumas, just all mental health. Like, where, where you want to go? We, we've just, done did it. Step parents, b- splitting bills. Right. Like, we, we got definitely plethora of touchable conversations that needed to be get, needed to get touched on right for sure. so i think we definitely fulfilled our goal again it's just i think in the manner we fulfilled it right i feel yeah. like because we can still we can be the walking dummy right yeah. and people can learn from it but is that how you want people to learn from right it? you feel me like right. i rather and i think i can speak for both for us both when i say i rather us be the the walking influence in the right way right, right? like showing right. you that yo this is how we get through our arguments not the laughing stock in, yeah. oh, I don't want to go through that. Yeah. I don't want to look like that. And yeah. um, so I think, you know, we, we got to the destination. It, it, it wasn't the, the, the yeah. most um, convenient it, way, but we, we got course. it. We got to it. But um, I guess we can talk about some of the uh, the journey, right? And how, yeah. we, how we ended up at 69 going 
separate ways or however people yeah. look at it. Like, right. um, uh, well, you know, shout out to the team, mm-hmm. you know, because I definitely think the start of a successful machine was the team. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we could start with Alex and Jewel, yeah. you know, two producers. For sure. When it was just us two, they came on board and sat in the living room and they posed the questions, they asked the questions, and they definitely assisted in the type of conversations we were going to have. Mm-hmm. And um, shout out to Jewel Alexander, the Blanc, no, for and sure. Jewel, the producer. Um, uh, you know, um, I definitely want to um, show mad gratitude and love for, like, the entire team. Yeah. Like, Especially Alex, man. Alex came, you yeah. know, from the beginning, and and if he, you know, if you know, you know, right? You know and who he, Alex and, is. If you've been Alex, on the journey from the beginning, you know who Alex is. Alex really, he 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 really, yeah. put a stain in a good way on our yeah. on our show, right? Or, and even in of, our lives, right? Like, yeah. so, and um, I think you we talk about this foundation, and and when you anytime you create anything, you wanna you wanna come and you wanna say, okay, this is my goal, and I'm gonna stick to this goal, right? What happened was, you know, we wanted to grow, and I'm not gonna yeah. lie. As a, as a creative, I'm a I'm a I'm gonna take responsibility for it all. You know what I'm saying? Because I think I had a big part in that. And us wanting to grow, I was I don't want to say I was willing to do anything, but I wanted to do anything that made sense. And a part of doing anything that makes sense, sometimes you make things make sense when they don't make sense. You make it make sense to yourself, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So like you know, in that, um, you you had a friend Jasmine, mm-hmm. and I thought Jasmine was very intelligent in yeah. the way she spoke i thought she yeah. she was she, she really knows could a defend. lot of like information yeah like, on all room and she like, could defend it really yeah. well yeah and on top of that she's she, spicy yeah, yeah. And then she she was a tra- attractive young yeah. lady so i'm like yo yeah. i think if we get her on it mm-hmm. would be fire it wasn't really mm-hmm. about the numbers it was really about yeah. her personality yeah. and i'm like yo if i add this personality this would be fire mm-hmm. right that was my mm-hmm. that was my my intention and you know you had your reservations for it because like that's your friend. This, yeah. this is like mixing we're talking like business and friendship. This is yeah. real life. We already doing it in our yeah. own relationship. So I'm like, when that happened, we like you said we had Jewel. Let's 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 remind it. So Jewel had some some situations with her family. Yeah. I think her mom's passed. Yeah, rest in peace, rest uh, in her mom's. You feel me? Mm-hmm. And she couldn't fulfill the obligations anymore. Right. But if you know. Jewel and Alex was always talking on the back end. Yeah. Like they was they yeah. had mics the, off the yep, camera. Yep. So. That was that was the goal. I started to go off track. Once I'm like, yo, let's bring Jasmine in. Because Jasmine, I'm like, yo, nah, we got to have her on camera. Mm-hmm. But I'm like, I can't just have her on camera and not have Alex on camera. Right. So let's bring them both on camera. Yeah. And I think. And, and even in that, though, we had successful, very successful episodes. Like, they were still good. There was some that was um, still the dynamic, still changed the direction of the podcast. But it wasn't necessarily in the bad way either Mm -hmm. like it had its pros and cons to both sides so it still was very um it still was a good overall it was a good judgment call Mm -hmm. you know what i mean um the dynamic was still fire at that point like and we definitely made it work still no it definitely worked. i just think you know like again like when you when you've been creative and you creating these things you definitely want to stick to what you what you have in mind you know what i'm saying you Mm want to stick to the plan because when you go off course that's when that's when accidents yeah. happen. I feel mm-hmm. like I, I make this analogy all the time when we're talking about, you know, just having money, right? It's, yeah. it's, a, it's enough money in the world for all of us. Yeah. But what happens is just like on highways and interstates, once somebody go out of that lane, mm-hmm. that's how an accident happened. Now mm-hmm. you slowed it down for uh, thousands of other cars. You know what I'm saying? And I think I just, you know, I just got um, beside myself because it was best. It was, it was the intent was good, mm-hmm. but it just. I probably should have thought. Yeah, and I think about uh, it even when you deal with a team, it's a lot of different personalities. Like you know, and that's hard to maintain in general. There's a lot of egos. It's a lot of you know temperaments and just things that you have to be mindful of, sensitivities and things like that. So having to manage that many people, it already is a lot like to deal with because we not only are we dealing with the people on the back end, we're dealing with the people on set. So you know, I think the clash of the personalities definitely left uh you know even even to the fall of it just a bad taste in the gemini scorpio podcast history mm-hmm. mouth like yeah. that's just what it did like for no. sure yeah and then it's crazy bro because like you never this is wild mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. i can't even be, i can't even believe we about to have this conversation because yeah. like you never think you are where you are until you see yeah why you are there yeah. what i mean by that is like it was times where we were, we were looking at our, 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 our um, numbers and we're like, 
yo, as long as we get 100 listeners, yeah. or as long as we get 100 viewers on YouTube, right? And then, like, we like, Turn okay, around. let's get 1,000, right? And we start to get 1,000, but you see the, the personalities change. Yeah. And yeah. it's like, yeah. at first, it's like, you don't notice it, but then you start to feel it, yeah. and it's like, why? Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And, ah, You man. know, well, it's the power of the validation. Like, you get what I'm saying? Like, now, like, like you said, like, even all of it is competitive to a certain degree because you have all these talents and everybody has their core different fans. Like, so you have yours. I had mine. Jasmine had hers. Alex had his. And then what happens is, like, ego starts to play a point. Like, oh, I'm the more important one or I'm the more important one or I'm the, you know, star of the show or I'm because this and that and, you know, those things. And depending what social standards are saying at that time, that validation becomes like a crutch. Like, you know what I mean? So now you see people's personalities doing a little shift, a little big, a little get a little big headed. Like now it's oh, you know, and, you know, that's what people want to like. A lot of people are doing podcasts. You know, I would hope to spread some knowledge or information or but there's so many different podcasts like conspiracy theories it's, it's so many a niche for everything that notoriety and and being seen is the goal because mm -hmm. that's how you know the more people the more visibility the more people see it the more it flourishes right mm -hmm. but the more of that comes with also the validation because the more people co-sign it or the more people say oh you really that girl or you really that guy or it, it do give you a little leather jacket with a little pop collar pop <laughs> like you know what i mean it gives you that it's crazy because like I never I don't think I spoke on this publicly, but like I did want to just speak on the um you know, like sometimes you just gotta remind yourself yeah. of the reality, right? And I'm gonna be real. So even when we talk about the Jasmine thing, mm -hmm. like, you know, it was so many people that came to me and say, Yo, why did y'all add her? Right? Yo, mm -hmm. why did y'all add her? Or even shit, to be honest, um, bro, you should get another guy on there because Alex isn't uh, yeah. as talkative or whatever. And it's like, ah, intentionally had to remind myself over and over nah it's working how i want yeah. it to work jasmine is perfect alex is perfect you get yeah. what i'm saying but what happens is if you don't have that that strong wherewithal or mental mentality you can get broken down by anybody right yeah. it's like it's like you want to stand for something or fall for anything exactly. so it's like if you got people in your corner that's saying nah you you the real reason why people coming to your show i mean yeah. why people watching the show or Nah, you don't need dumb. And if you're not mentally strong enough to be like, you know what? Yep. Nah, nah. And I think I can see that going the other way because I was in those predicaments yep. many times. Like where yeah. people were saying, Jay, you shouldn't. Or Jay, why you? And yeah. I'm like, nah, we good. It's perfect how it is. You feel me? But if you're not, if you're not mentally built like that, yeah. you can fall for it. And I understand. Yeah. So it's like, it's, it's unfortunate. Yeah. But I mean, shit yeah. happens. Shit uh, happens. I think. Um, I definitely think like even like you know ending it how it ended you know jasmine being off the show and going forward it, it also played a strain into our relationships our dynamic as a team because like you know i think uh and we were just talking about this how creating your team you're also are creating a safe space right so whenever the safe space is compromised mm. everybody's mind kind of like for example uh my job was going through it uh we had a new management team come in and then uh things started switching so people were leaving but if you keep seeing people leaving or see, seeing different like discrepancies going on, you get nervous. Like, uh, is it safe here? Do I need to look for another job? Do I need to, you know, mentally make sense of what's going on? Do I need to switch my surroundings? Is this person really a good person? Are they, you know, and it created a lot of underlying turmoil through the team. Mm, and, and, and it was very, it, the ripples were very extensive. And um, you didn't really see it coming. You felt it and you felt the shifts and the changes, but. Again, you think, nah, nah, we good the way we are. Everything's going to pan back out. And then you turn around, you realize that one wrong decision can shake the whole entire ship. Yo, it's crazy because, like, we talk about, like, um, you hear this, these analogies, like, don't let something be a cancer. Don't let somebody be a yeah. cancer because, you know, a cancer, one cancer itself yeah. can corrupt the, uh, yeah. a, whole health, a whole lot of healthy cells, right? And it's crazy. That, and even if you think what, about what it. What they say, the rotten apple. Right. So, but if you, you think about it, right, let's say. Spoil the bunch, but. Like, but, and the, as, the worst thing you could do as a leader is lose control of your team. Yes. And that's yes. even one person. And what I mean yes. by that is, I'm going to paint a picture. Some people going, they might not agree with this, but whatever. You come into a place. I'm not going to say nobody else, but you, let's say you come into an area. Yeah. The area is dirty. If you have a piece of trash <laughs> that you're done with, more than likely, what you're going to do? You probably throw it. Like the cup. Yeah, you're you going to throw it on the floor, right? <laughs> if you come into an area or a space that's clean, and you finish with you yeah. finish with something. What you want to do? You probably put it in the trash yeah. can because you don't want to be that one. Yeah. So I say that to say when you have a team, 
if you allow one person to do something, right? right eventually, everybody else is going to feel like they can do yeah. the same thing. Yeah, like, so if you know one person's repetitively late. Exactly. Now, well, that person's late. So, well, I got I'm some a, time. So, I got time to kill. And even if it's not, and it, yeah. Even if it's not intentional. Yeah. Let's just say, like, because I'm, you know, I always try to give people the benefit of the doubt. Yeah. What happens is, I'm a, even if it's not intentional, what happens is, you know what? I know such and such is going to be late, so I got to extra. So it might not even yeah. be from a malice place. Yeah, yeah, it might not yeah, be yeah, like, yeah. nah, they going to be late, so yeah. I'm going to be late too. It's like, well, it I know be... it's not going to start on time anyway. Exactly. So like, let me, I'm not about to kill and rush myself, exactly. which makes sense in hindsight. Like, if I know the show, y'all keep saying pull up at one and the show not starting until four, but I know these things are going to happen and I ain't really coming until 3.30. Fact. Because why would I be here at one? Nobody else is ready at one. Like, it's, it's not a malicious place at all. It's kind of just... You know, I, I'm I'm getting acquainted with, with what I've got going on. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I just understand the dynamic. And yeah. unfortunately, that was becoming the dynamic. Right. And these are things as a leader, as anybody that's building a podcast or a team of, of such of anything, you know what I'm saying? You want to make sure you have a control on your team and your, and your core group of people. Because what happens is if y'all all militant, you know what I'm saying? You're only going to be weak as the, the weakest link. And mm-hmm. if all your links are strong, mm-hmm. then you ain't going to break. But what happens is like you allow one yeah. link to go spoiled and go and, 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 and go rotten and then. Well, I want to cut us some slack and give us some credit because we were very professional to start that. We did actual interviews. We had contracts. We were very much in tune and aligned with our team at a point. You know, we definitely made some hiccups and some decisions later on that probably affected the team. But I still want to give some grace and some credit to the fact that we really did handle that and we really did do that. Like we had a lot of people. Can we shout them out real quick since oh, we're yeah, here? Because I sure. just like, you know, I miss the team so much and I always think of them because these are people who just kind of believed in us when we just were starting and we really didn't know where it was going to go. But they believed in us so much that they followed. And it was a large army. Like you turned Facts. around, we started with one person. Now we have a 15 man band. Like Facts. it was crazy. And then all the people who pulled up just to watch, just Facts. to be in the environment. It was truly a, a moment. And like we fellowship together and it was really family you know, despite the mishaps that, you know, carried sure. over, it, it really started and it was family. And through that, a lot of people got to flourish in a lot of areas and get just opportunities that they they should and deserve. Like, so, it you, you know, I definitely want to shout them out. Oh, so uh, we can start with Alexander DeBlanc, Jewel the producer, Monique Pink Celebrity, Lex in the City, the bartender. We got Sherm, uh, the cameraman, Joseph, the friend, the cameraman, Lante, Gio the Leo, the producer. Uh, who am I missing? Shout out to Catch-22 Hookah. Brandon and Tim was always in the building. Uh, we've had makeup artists. Uh, shout out to Gigi, mm-hmm. cameraman, her husband. Um, I'm sorry. I always forget his name. I'm so sorry. Gigi's husband. Are you going to put me do, in a spot like that? I'm sorry, but, I, you know, I say he, he wasn't there all the time, but he still played um, a part. It's like sen, by sen, sen, Oh, my bad. Sen, b- by scenario. Yeah, because I don't ever. We, we I don't, don't say get the at name, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Because I always say it wrong. That's really why I asked Jay, so my bad, but you know. Let me you see if I that. get it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> shout out to Taz will pull up. Shout out to Taz. Oh, my God. Sorry, Taz. Taz Cannonboy Films. You already know. Family uh, cameraman. Um, who else? It was just always some dope people in the building um, that worked on our team and then people who would just pull up other creatives, entrepreneurs who just wanted to be in a creative space of creative juices flowing where we just all really, you know, fellowship and made it happen. Um, I think I had every, all our immediate team members, you know, if I missed some extras that did pulled up from time to time, I'm super sorry. It's a lot of y'all. Yeah. Blame it on and, my, um, uh, my heart. Not my, blame it on my brain and not yeah, my heart. Blame it on my brain, not my heart, but just shout out to the team because, you know, we was really family from there. Y'all was pulling up for thanksgiving dinners like it really started it, it started to get different and i really just appreciate at that point that was our village before we had a village uh our team was our village and they was there rooting for us like y'all pull it together get it together we've had alex sit in on some arguments we we literally pulled it together like a family so i forever forever you know hold it to my heart sacredly for sure no nah, for sure let's yeah. so let's get into some spicy stuff that people want to know right so we was doing good and you know boom it just came to a stop yeah i wasn't fucking with that shit so um (laughs) one i guess we can address why i mean well uh i think i've already addressed it but we can address it together yeah um i think like at that time jay and i were going through a really rough patch and we really couldn't figure it out and i you know, at that time, um, and I don't think I've actually said this on camera, but like, you know, when um, prior to the podcast, you know, I was still figuring out things that I wanted to do. We started the podcast. It got really successful. So that became my main hub of 
my content, right? So obviously my partner introduced it to me, you know, who was already a creator prior to that. So I was going through what they would call like uh, imposter syndrome at the time. So when me and Jay was in a rough patch, I kept saying like, I can't podcast no more because he put me on and I'm not doing it. And I was in my own way, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? And I was uh, really just like, feeling like I wasn't allowing him to play a catalyst to my pivotal career pro- moments, even though I was good at it, even though I, I, I was great at what I was doing, I just didn't want to accept it because it was coming from somebody I just wasn't seeing eye to eye with at the time. So I was like, well, I'm not doing it. We're not getting along. I'm not going to suck it up and just sit here like everything's okay. And I'm not going to go do it on my own at the time because of uh, imposter syndrome. Like I just felt like that's not maybe that's not who I am maybe I don't I shouldn't be there I should be doing that and um so I just put it to a halt also I I was going through major healing season like I needed a lot that I just don't think I could have got on camera and filmed and it not have been mm-hmm. seen like you so, know what I mean, mean? In, 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 in your defense you feel me I think this is is built off of a relationship. Right. You know what I'm saying? You don't have a relationship, you don't have a podcast. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, it just is yeah. what it is, right? Yeah. So, like, we was, um, we both was going through some growing things. You yeah. feel me? Like, I was still growing as a man, as I still am, as I still am, you Likewise. feel me? And, um, you know, we, um, we just went through some shit where it was like, nah. Yeah. We can't keep doing this. Yeah. Um, me being a, a creative, you feel me? I didn't know how to separate the art and the reality of my real life. You know what I'm saying? And I think um, I was like, I got to keep the content going. Um, I got to keep it going for us. But in that, in that space, not understanding the dynamic of your partner. We talk about, mm-hmm. we talk about um, the foundation. And let's just be real. I don't think we, had, we started off with the, with the best of foundation personally mm-hmm. either, right? Mm-hmm. So let's just, we want to talk about it. Let's talk yeah. about it. And I feel like we, it was things that we wasn't able to deal with, like how we deal with conflict, how we deal with each other in the yeah. times of need when we need each other the most. Yeah. And I think the way I was dealing with the situation was the best way I knew how, but it wasn't mm-hmm. the best way for you, right? Mm-hmm. So it's like, okay. And vice versa. Right. I was and it's dealing like, with it the best way I knew how. Exactly. But I'm, I'm, even, I'm just talking about like strictly mm-hmm. for the content. I'm mm-hmm. like, okay, it was however we, she said she needed. So yeah. I'm going to just go. Because I asked, I asked Jay, like, can we take a break? Like, so that I could kind of just have some, like, time. But I think, like, as a creative, what's that? What's a break? Like, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, you know, at, when you're in, when you know when you're hot and you're lit, you can't really stop the momentum. Because once you stop it, because I experienced it myself, you stop the momentum and you kind of got to pick it back up from the ground up. You right. know what I'm saying? So he, as a creative prior to the podcast, like, what's a break? How long you need? You a week? And I'm like, actually, I need, like, two months to heal. <laughs> like, I need a second. Like, that's, I, it's, I'm not going to get over this in a week. Like, I can't just record. But that was something that we handled completely differently. You know, I, like, I needed time. He needed the work because that's his safe spaces and his creative way of doing things and handling his emotions. So it was a tug of war and which prompted you to continue. And it pushed me farther back in my handling because now my feelings is hurt. Like, He's just going to continue podcasting without me. Now I'm really like, I can't do this. Like, you know, like just drama, dramatic about it. Not dramatic. You know, my feelings were valid, but still, you know. But no, I think, yeah. I think that's something that we could talk about in mm-hmm. depth because I think, you know, I was so focused on the work and keeping this thing going. I'm like, yo, if we're going to be good, we're going to be good. So let me not stop because the worst thing that's going to happen is if I stop, this is done. Yeah. We're going to work on it. We're going to be good. And then. It's no more that when that's just not true, right? Yeah. We could have, we could have, just like we did now, we could have took how many, however many months we needed to take off and came back whenever we felt like it. Cause that's, it's us at the end of the day. Yeah, we might think we owe our supporters an obligation, but to a, to well, a minimum. Look at us giving each other grace. Like, you know what I'm saying? Nah, for a fact. Saying, so, thank you. So I really I'm just being appreciate real. That. And I'm saying, like, however, granted, no, I, the two other hubs wouldn't have birthed yeah, had nah, it not been that. You right. know what I mean? And, but that's what I'm saying. But I just feel like, you know, it's always a love, like, it's always, a level of balance, right? And yeah. you always want to, you give something, you're going to have to receive a little bit, yeah. right? So, yeah, I, I did that. And granted, um, you had the girls, I had the guys, and, and, and that was a that good was thing. That was a great time. But like, that was a great time. All in all, you got to look at it and be like, damn, was this worth this, mm-hmm. right? And granted, we're here, we here working with each other, but at the end of the day, it's like, yeah. you got to sit back and ask, like, is this worth right. this? Is, is me continuing this content? And continuing to build this worth my relationship, right? Right. right and right. we could—that's that, a conversation that we could have yeah. forever. But I just think um, 
I do want to give you that grace and say, you know, I apologize for not having enough grace to be able to deal with you in the time where you needed me to deal with you be gracefully. You know what I'm saying? Like, when, in a moment where you needed grace, I didn't give you enough. You know what I'm trying to say? And I wanted to uh, just take the time to apologize for that. But at the end of the day, you know, we, we did birth yeah. two shows. Yeah. That's how it came about. So, yeah. you but know. I, I accept your apology. Thank you. Uh -huh. Even though we, you know, kind of spoke about some things, but I appreciate that. No, nah, for sure. Yeah. I wanted to publicly say that. But yeah. from that, you know, we like, yo, I'm like, man, my mind, I got to keep going. I got to keep going. Yeah. I'm going to get these guys in the replace. For now, and I was y'all. I was so heartbroken when Jay got new co host under the Gemini Scorpio podcast name. I was like, This is my show, this is illegal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we were talking about that. This is illegal, it's not just your show. How do you just replace me as a co host? We are the creators. <laughs> like, I was so Sick. I couldn't believe it. Like, I was like, and it really, like, honestly, I'm gonna be honest, like, that's what kept me from podcasting for a while because. I was just heartbroken. You know, you ever birth something and it's like you have it and you and it's like, that's my baby. And then somebody just take the baby and put it in different clothes. I did not send it to school like that. Like I was really just like, you know, like heartbroken by it. So but the guys but were great. I'm not going to lie. You asked a question. I don't, don't want to get off. No. But you were going into the guys. No, no. Nah, nah, you I you had something? said something that I just had to speak on. Which one? You said you ever like have a baby, you send it to, to school, school and they and change it, their clothes. Like who changed my clothes? Who you well, okay, that, that was not like nah, but like you ever like people who got kids, you do your daughter hair and they come back in the motherfucking clips and oh, everything right, is right, missing. Right. It's like, God damn, I took all my time to <laughs> do your nah, hair. Facts. And you come back and it's out to here, like who touched your hair? Like, I'm you know what I mean? You. It was but nah, it's kinda like that. I, uh, <laughs> but nah, I, I, I'm fucking with you, but nah, for real. I think you know I, I used to get my ass whooped for leaving clips, by the way. Just saying. I I, I like, birthed the uh the guys. I'm like, yo, yeah. we're gonna do this. And I told them it's temporary. It's just until Shadi come back. I was very yeah. transparent with that. I was sad. But I ain't gonna lie, it got it got a different react. It was great. I'm, it was great. I don't even know. Like, I ain't even going to say, like, I didn't expect it. I just, it was just something to do until we got our shit together. Yeah. And that shit just, it, it just. Shout out to your co-host. Yeah, no. Nah, shout out my guy Jay. Shout out my guy Gambit. Shout out yeah. to uh, Stars. And it just was like, it, it, it was, it was, it was something special for sure. It was special. It was, it was like, it I, was. It was special. Like, yeah. it, it, that shit was we, crazy. That was another one of the ones we were running through the other day, just going back to the podcast. It was a whole bunch of kiki. It was on crazy. All of them. Yeah. And I'm listening to them in the background. I'm cackling because I'm like, damn, these motherfuckers was really good. <laughs> like, I'm like, that was really funny. So without then me. How y'all funny without me? So then we come to back together. We like, yo. And I'm like, you know me, I try to be fair. I'm like, yo, I did the all guys. It's only right that you do the all girls. We're going to just name mm -hmm. it something else. Mm -hmm. And then y'all came out the. The to gutter just squinging. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? For sure. Let me shout out my co-hosts because those is my babe. Shout out the Diamond LaShawn. Shout out Paris to Tokyo. B, Boogie with the T, B, Garrett. You know, then we had some other co-hosts come on. Jasmine Butler, Paris LeVay. You know, everybody really, really, you know, I, the girls got a special place in my heart. I ain't even gonna lie because they came through the gate like, what's good? Like, I was like, I'm not ready and got great reaction. And um, even that, like, you know, just to highlight, like, when you start things and the foundation isn't built off of the right thing, like, then you have to kind of pull back. You know, I think I sometimes always kind of felt a little not sad about it, but that I kind of pulled the plug on the girls, too, mm. because we tried, you know, like we were going to keep it going. But like, I'm not I'm, I'm going to be honest. I'm going to just be honest. You know, the girls hate to say stuff like that. I really need a J because Jay was really our camera crew he was the cameraman the audio he like how y'all want it like let me fix this but you know when he ended up moving to Atlanta before me we had nobody and I'm like I cannot for the life of me set up all this equipment get all the girls together get the audio together get like and then it was to the point where I was borrowing equipment remember you set up a situation where I was able to get the equipment because you took all your equipment with you I was able to get all the cameras and everything I needed but the setup it was just so much Jay really does have an eye for the visuals and how he likes things. So, you know, that was never my part of the podcast. I'm the talent. I show up. I get a coffee. I sit on the couch. And I talk <laughs> shit. <laughs> I was not behind the cameras, whatever. So I'm in there sh like, y'all, I was so stressed out. It was I never forget when I was like, I am done. We were trying to record took forever to set up. It took us so long. And, you know, dealing with the girls, they already be late and always late. but. You know, we we finally get started. 
We in the room. The fucking alarm just starts going off. Mm, mm, mm. And I'm like, I can't do this. <laughs> like, I just had to set all that up. All these things. The alarm is going off. Now we can't. All through the audio is beep, beep, beep. I'm just like, get the fucking cameras away. I'm gone. Like, and um, and it's hard. It's a lot of work. And it's something that people don't talk about. Like, when you're trying to actually do these podcasts and you're intentional on your setup, your audio, your mics, everything. Everything got to be picture perfect. And, and it's placed in... It's not easy if you, you know, the girls will get it, get it. The guys will get it, get it. And the ones who don't, don't. And I'm not that. Yo, like, I, I, I am not been, that. It's been times where I've, <laughs> I've started some shit and I ain't even record, push record. Like, man. So it's, I get it. It's a it, lot it's, of mishaps. Like, yeah, a lot of mishaps sure. going into it. And I just couldn't handle it by myself. And, you know, shout out to my girls, but they really were the talent. You know, I was really at that point, the ship. Like, so I was just like. Uh uh-uh, uh, this nigga left me here already. He replaced me on the. I was just blaming everything on Jay. He already left me with the co. He left me, got new co hosts, and he gonna leave and move to Atlanta, and leave me here to manage the girls by myself. Like, and you told me to do it. I was hot, okay. That's, I was hot. I was so we hot. we talked about kind of like the rise and fall of mm-hmm. TGSP, right? Let's talk about what's going on right now. Okay. Yeah, we made y'all wait forty five minutes until we talk about yeah. this. Let's talk about what's going on. So. Gemini Scorpio podcast episode sixty four. Sixty four. We uh, collab with a um a podcast, te- Tequila Talk podcast. Yeah. And shout out to Tequila Talk. Well, Jazz, cool. Shout out to them. Mm-hmm. And this first of all, this episode was terrible. Yo, we watched this shit today, and I was like, "Who the fuck let us drink that much? Where's One. the direction?" Why can't we finish a fucking topic? <laughs> that shit was great. Why are we always wandering off a topic? Like it just was so bad. It was, and you were saying it in the podcast. Like this is so good, but it's so bad. Yeah, I said it. I'm like, it's it so good, terrible. but it's so bad. We were all over the place. Lex, shout out to Lex. The bartender just kept feeding us shot, and they're the tequila talk show, so they drink on their show. That was the goal. Yeah, that was the goal. Like For Jay, me, yeah. I think Jay's goal was to get yeah. the tequila talk show drunk. We got drunk, yeah. and um, it was terrible. It was it was it was terrible. Great points. Great. You know, great. It could have been great conversation, um, but it was a we lie. Fumbled that bag. We, we did fumble that bag. However, still jokes. It was tons of jokes. It was, like, oh, you want funny? You will go get the funny. You want, you want you want to get your kikis on? It, it, it will give you a nice little chuckle. Um, and it's viral now. This is episode 64, which is also about two years ago. Mm hmm. This is a two-year-old. Let, can we put that in perspective one more time? It's this is a two-year-old two uh, episode. Episode. So there's, I don't think people understand the amount of growth that happens two years with people um, in the way they approach things, in their perspectives, in their pitch, in the way they communicate. So let's just put that in perspective. This is I over two years. I ain't giving them that. That I don't want to give the people that much leeway. I'm oh, going to no, tell no, you no. why. We stand on what we say. No. But- we but, might we might say it different now. No, nah, well, that's true. That's I'm, true. We might real, say it that, different yeah, now. Facts. But what I will you know, say I is, I was being real goofy on that one. I ain't that girl. But what I will <laughs> say is, I feel like first of all, let's talk about these viral clips and just the internet. The internet is a very strange I, place. Listen, I do it because I know people going to bite. Yeah, you feel me. But at the end of the day, let's talk some reality of it. Yeah, my nigga, it's a thirty-five second. Yeah. clip you're not going to get no context out of a 35 second clip it's like if you believe what you see in a 35 second clip over two we recorded for two hours and two I, hours i just feel like but why are y'all making up your own context <laughs> like like if you don't know you don't want to go just find out why make up scenarios like and that's just where I just know the internet. Like you just you hear gotta let the internet running. be the internet. You gotta let them be the internet. It's like you gotta they let literally them. make up their whole. Like you would have thought they knew the person, the the people, everybody personally. The way they make up their own dialogue. Like they know what they were gonna say. Know what they were doing behind that. And this is the reason. And I know it's the reason because I know her. No, you don't. You Facts. don't know these people from Adam. Can like, the paint. How do you know what they meant? Facts. And, and I just think you know, like when it comes to that, like I guess it ain't really nothing to explain. I yeah. think. Um, I feel like people be getting beside themselves. Like, it's like... Yeah. People... That's why Will the, Smith smacking people. Yeah, and people in the yeah. comments just be like, I just feel like these yeah. motherfuckers are crazy. Like, I just I just feel like, you know, Jazz was talking about how she dealt with her, her children or whatever, and, and, and it, 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 could, it could pretty much so <laughs> not be right, but we can't ignore the fact that, and, shit, we probably all been in these situations. And on top of that, I feel like people don't understand. People have a, you know, and we were talking about this too podcasters are also a talent 
So it is our job to get up here and entertain. There is times we're going to get up here here and be super dramatic in our pitch or super dramatic in our delivery or super ignorant, or, or just super ignorant. But it's also with purpose to entertain. Right. So if I say that I rather die on the side of the road, do it mean I'm a really die? No, I mean, it still was crazy. It, it was. That's fine. But, <laughs> yeah, it, but right. as your job as a creator is to, dr- you know, make yeah. it even more enticing. Like, yeah. that's stupid as fuck. <laughs> Either way, in retrospect, it's still you can't tell nobody's condescendingness. Right. You can't tell their jokey pitch. You don't know them. And I think it's dope. So respect them as a creator. Yeah, no, nah, and, and that's wanna... what I think. Like, you have to respect a a podcaster, a host, all these as a creator first, which is their, it's their job to entertain. So I might be super dramatic or super sarcastic. And of course you can't tell or understand the context because you don't know me and know my level of sarcasm or I mean, you know, jokes. I like, mean, you just no, no, you're right. I think that's the humane way to look yeah. at it. However, they're not being a creator. I think you're not supposed to expect respect from nobody. And you that's know what I'm saying? We're, we're, we're here. I, to put absolutely agree. you know what I'm saying we're These here people don't owe you nothing exactly like we're here to put on a show or whatever and whoever gravitate to it gravitate to it yeah. those who don't don't and I think you true. said something earlier like it's like if you live by the by the the, the comment you won't die by the comment Not you get what I'm saying so it's like yep. if you if you get overly excited when you get a bunch yeah. of your likes and be hurt comments they your feelings gonna be hurt when you get you. a bunch of bad yeah. negative comments you know what I'm saying it is what it is and and yeah. we all are, are human and we fall victim to that yeah. that that. That that reality of being super excited. We knew it was me. I'm not finna play. Listen, because, you know, I, at this point I have, and, you know, since we've talked about our rise and fall, I have lost a friendship due to the viral moments getting too extreme. Yeah. All right. And this is what I will say. Yeah. If you want to be out here and filming and whether whatever your content is it is going on the internet you have no idea when this is going to resurface so if you don't want it out there don't say it don't do if it you don't want it to be seen don't do it don't record because it because at the end of the day at any moment somebody could pull your video from five years ago and be like oh that girl da, da, da. you may look like a whole different girl a whole different guy your whole perspective then change but you have to that is the power of the internet and if you are out here to entertain or to show content then you have to also Take wave off that it. risk because that's uh, that you have to take what come with it you can't be you know and i'm not saying it doesn't it's not bothersome sometimes i'm not saying but you have to mentally prepare yourself like okay if this goes super viral right now am i gonna be okay like you know don't come out here telling no crazy tea if you don't want because if it resurfaced and it, you're going to be listen it's gonna hurt especially right. when the people take it out of context you know because even in jazz coop's case you know and i'm and i just want to say this because jazz coop is one of my real friends and um uh, we are very close and she's a very inspiring woman to me i've known her since i was younger uh she has aided me through a lot of things through my life you know what i'm saying so i just want to first set the record straight that my girl is not only a great mother but a phenomenal woman um she has a great career and she does her thing right what she comes on here and says in her personal spaces and her content or whatever, and, you know, she's also a creator. She's a talent. So she's also dr- dramatizing this for you, mm-hmm. right? But all that to say is that that is also something that she has to take into consideration. Like, look, I put it out there, and that's what it is. We can't control the masses and, you know, them coming out saying, oh, what a toxic mother or, you know, I think it's very mean of people. You know, they do go to the extremes, but I've dealt with this again with another friend and it's it's hard on both sides, but it's really our job because it's our job. Like, you get what I'm saying? It's our job to kind of take it with a grain of salt. Like, it's not the people because the masses, no offense, are sheep. Like, they mm. follow they followed the waves. Like if the waves say she corny, she corny. And you know, it's going to be a little stream of a tide that may go over here to think the other way, but the majority of the waves going to go the same way, Mm -hmm. you know? So it's like, you know, it sucks, but you know, I think that creators need to do a better job at not reading the comments, not reading the comments. Just don't read the comments. You know, everybody get dragged this time or two. You know what I'm saying? Like, but you can't read the comments. You got to have tough skin though. For real. At the end of the day, I think um, I wanted to ask like, then this is kind of going left, but I'm just curious. Since we're here, we, I feel like we got yeah. to gotta give it to them, give the people what they want, whatever. Why do you think... How can I ask this? You know without being, this I want to be respectful me. how I ask this question. Why do you think... Jay don't know what to say. Um, 
because we like we can't ignore. I think I had this conversation before, but we we can't ignore this this narrative that the world try to paint of a black woman, right? Yeah. And that's angry black yeah. woman, whatever. Always. But, and I asked this before, but I, I'm gonna ask you like, why do you think? Where does it come from? Like when 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 Jazz makes a statement and say, "I would rather die on a road before I call my baby father or my yeah. child's father." And it's like, on one side, I can understand because it's like, yo, if I've been doing this for so long by myself, then I would die doing it by myself. You get what I'm trying to say? Yeah. I, I, I kind of understand it, but it's like, I'm curious to think, like, where do you think it come from? Which, wait, which part exactly? Just her that, 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 or no, not the, even her the sediments. part of just a lot of people painting black women as angry? <laughs> well, the, the constant need to feel like I have to protect myself because I don't want to. Okay. Again, I want to be. Well, I want to be fair in it, though. You know what I'm saying? So I'm you not, said the the black woman's constant need to feel like they got to protect themselves. Yeah, and and well, and, one we're always often in unsafe places. Like you know what I mean? Like we're we're in territories that are already built against us. Uh, whether it's in it, whether it's amongst men or it's in corporate America or it's you know, in your household, like, you know, like even when I talk about things like, for example, like I'm Jamaican, they favoritize their boys. The girls get put to work and talk too crazy and the boys get to sit on their ass and do whatever the fuck they want. Like, but I feel like that's a lot of cultures. Like, uh, men are a lot of times praised higher than women. Um, also unsafe places like dealing with other aggressive men or like being in unsafe territory, like men taking advantage or you know, you know, not to get too deep into it, but just constantly putting them in un uncomfortable positions, right? In terms of Jasmine's point, the reason why I'm relating the message, because even when I dissect the message of what she may have been trying to say or the message that could have been delivered, is that she's not really saying that, like, oh, she can't call her baby father for anything. But at the end of the day, people don't want to acknowledge the imbalances of a mother and a father's duty. You know, a mother doesn't need to ask because she knows what's going on all the time. You get what I'm saying? And we talked about this, just the need to even have to ask. I don't want to have to ask because you should kind of know what's going on in your child's life. But because guys simply get choices like, OK, well, you'll take them to school Monday through Thursday and maybe on Friday I'll take them to the game, you know. Or like she said, if you watch further down the clip, if, if you're really a parent, why do you get a choice? You know, well, not this weekend. I can't watch my kids. Mothers don't really get that luxury. And it's not to say that whose fault. It's not to pose blame on the man, but that is our reality. And I think the problem why women get so defensive is because people don't allow us to live in our reality. Like they constantly kind of tell us like that doesn't exist or that it, as soon as they say something of this sort, that's her reality. Her perspective is, ah, you're such a toxic mother because why would you not let her see her father? And now all these narratives are thrown, but she's really saying her reality. My reality is that I really don't get the support that I give. So I would rather die before I ask for it because if you were going to do it, you would have did it anyway. Yeah. You know, um, and that's why I brought it up because I definitely like um, empathize with that. Right. Yeah. And, and I can understand the pain and frustration in it. But at the same time, I feel like in those situations, I think we both have our realities and why can't we just allow each other to have our own reality instead right. of continuing to, have to point the finger at each other because what it sounds like is it's like it's like for some reason your reality has to downplay my role as not a, no not not only a father or a man right like for example I think yeah you might know the the teacher name because you go every day right mm -hmm. or you might know mm -hmm. uh when your your daughter come on a mystery or, or or whatever the case may right. be and I might not know but it's yeah. things that I'm doing that you might not know it's, it's okay. things that the man the the things that I'm taking care of in the home. And for the family that you might not know. And if we continue to, to go through this constant back and forth and, and power struggle and just pointing a finger at each other, we're never going to get anywhere. So when she say things like, yeah, I would rather die on the side of the road because you ain't been here yet or whatever the case may be. She didn't say that though. Yeah, yeah. I'm just saying like, you said. But that's my point because I agree with you and mm -hmm. I think that's what you're saying is a fair segment. But she didn't say because he's not doing this. What she said was her reality. Right. I would rather die on the side of the road before I ask him for help. That did not indicate if I ask him for help, he's not going to help me. And she didn't so say that. Can I ask you this though? No, you know you're right. So, so what I'm saying is when you first started, you said we have to let people live in their reality. So why nobody let her live in her reality? And I'm actually, because I think personally as a man, 
I feel like your your reality is a direct representation of who I am. Because when you say this, you said she ain't say that. And you're right, she didn't. However, if you would rather die on the side of the road than to call me because you feel like you've been doing it yourself, that says a lot about me. You can, I mean, I think as a man, that's, that's how I look at it. I feel like, and, and your reality could be right. But if I am, if I am a good person or if I am a good man, I just, I, I so don't understand that reality. speak her truths? Because here's the thing. I get what you're saying. But if that is her experience and mm -hmm. we've dealt with that, right? Like right. in a relationship, right? Your experience is yours. So my, and my experience is mine. And our stories may sound completely different to the, the people we tell or we share with, right? But in retrospect, if that is my truth, it really, how you feel about my truth really don't make or make me anything. That, that's my truth and what I live in, right? right? So if that happens to make you feel like you're not, why are you, you know, kind of why are you making me feel like I'm not doing my part or like what, that I'm not being the man that I am, that I know me to be, right? Mm -hmm. I feel like that's a conversation amongst you two, but she's not talking to you. Right. You get what I'm saying? Like, so she's not talking to him. And maybe that is a conversation they may have had. Like, look, or who knows how many times they had it or whatever. We don't know. But I'm not talking to him. If I'm talking to him and you feel like I'm attacking your character, understood. But if I'm just speaking my truth to my demographic and my peers and I'm not attacking you and saying, nah, my baby father ain't shit. She ain't get up there like, my baby father ain't shy. I said, that nigga for nothing. He don't pull up. He don't do nothing. She didn't say that. She said, but I would rather die so, before I ask. And, and I think that's why I'm getting confused because, like, you're right. But it can be insinuated. It's like, again, it's not what you're saying all the time. It's you mean how you like the it. viral moments, what they insinuate about her by what she said, right? Yeah, but Tough I want to get away right? from, I want to get away from, I want to get away because we know them and we know Jazz to be yeah. a good mother. I want to get away from just the in personal. The, you, right, you're talking yeah. about in and just I'm saying, in general, I'm using that as an analogy because right, so, that's what we're talking about. So, but I get what you're so saying. What I'm, what I'm saying is, yeah, if you're not, you are saying that by saying X, Y, and Z. That's un, 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 unconsciously, you are saying that by saying X, Y, Z. You might not be saying it verbally and, 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 and verbatim, but you're at, just like we talked the other day. We said, if you, if you are, uh, what's the word? Um, if you are um, omitting, right. then you are lying, right? So if you're saying this, then that's saying this as well. Can I ask you something else? Yeah. Okay, so you know how a lot of people are super, there's people who are super independent and hate asking people for help in mm, general. Right. Right. It doesn't mean that anybody has even necessarily let them down. They just fact. have something where I hate asking people for help. Right. Would it be a difference if she said, I would rather die before I ask anybody, anybody. for help? I think it. Because now what, what is her? Should her friends be like, well, bitch, why that make it seem like I wouldn't help you? So again, like, you know what I'm saying? But it that's her, like that's still a perspective. Like, for like, again, if I genuinely hate that asking somebody for help and i say i would rather die before asking somebody for help does that mean my friend wouldn't help me no i'm not so nah. not so i have friends not, that would right. help let me answer the question so i think it's, it's not right but when we're talking about this example or in a general this yeah, example i feel analogy. like an analogy i feel like when you single somebody out then it makes it about that person now if you make it generally right that's a different conversation and that's the real conversation where i want to get to and it's not it's not really about that's why i said it's not really about them my question is really, where does that come from? Like, even if you are that person, I feel like... Feeling unsafe. What, right. What, like, where does that come from that, yo, before I ask anybody for help, not just singing yeah. out somebody, before I ask anybody for help, I would rather die. And I'm like, yo, how can we because, get out of that? No, and, and that's a fair question. And I think that some of it does align with, like, you know, obviously people are creatures of habitat or of habits or things they've experienced, right? Right. So I, ideally, I'm going to say that if anybody that I've heard that said oh, I would rather die before I ask anybody for help. Let's generalize yeah. it, right? Then I'm assuming that the time that they did ask somebody help, they made they them feel like they wanted to die. Mm. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because what made it, it must have stung that deep the last time I asked for some help or the last time somebody told me they were going to do something for me. It cut them that deep that they, like, I, like, I felt like I was going to die that day. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I mean? I think it's expression. You know what I'm saying? And I think that, like, even, like, when I hear you asking your question, um, because I deal with this a lot, like uh, just even being the type of person I am. I'm super passionate in the way I speak, mm -hmm. right? And the things I say, right? So ideally, if something made me feel like I want to die, that's something I might say, like, I would rather die asking mm -hmm. for help. Like, right. you know what I'm saying? But it doesn't necessarily, like I said, but I feel like a lot of times because women are identified as only soft and feminine, whenever they switch a gear to being passionate or overly assertive, 
they're noted they're notated as angry or something above these realms but realistically i i feel so deeply that i also express just as deeply and my question is really and i think you might have answered it but i'm really trying to dig deeper in of where did that come from where did that stem from you from like how do we get past that like, I think that's for everybody, question. it's going to be subjective because it just depends where it's coming from. Like, I feel like everybody has different backgrounds. So depending who you're talking to, if you're asking me specifically, like I could tell you, it's just a lot of I've been, you know, let down a lot. What, 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 like, and, and I haven't per se said, like, I would die without asking for help. You know, I definitely appreciate I have a great support system and just a village. However, you know. I can only imagine in my spaces where I don't want to ask for help or things like that is from being let down or being misheard we, or misjudged or these things, which a lot of people have experienced. Let's time. let's let's set aside the doc. I think that might be yeah. too personal. We both have friends now. I think I overheard you say. Yeah, we have friends that acknowledge to the world or to social media that they feel like they can't talk to nobody. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah. And if we talk about the doc, let's let's because that's probably too extreme. Let's say yeah. the, the, the it's certain friends that. Will ask, will will come to you and yeah, say, yeah, like, "Hey, something talk. is going on, yeah, right?" Talk? But it's other yeah. friends who feel like they don't have nobody that they can talk yeah. to, and them saying that yeah. that could be taken personal amongst all of their friends if they feel like they can come to them. It can be, but I also feel like it doesn't have to be, and I just think that's where it just like I said, I feel like some things are uh, subjective because mm. I, I've been through similar situations, and when my when I felt like my friend was expressing that she didn't have anybody, I had to correct her and tell her out of love, like. You do have people, but you also have to be open to accepting the care that we want to give to you. If you are going through something and you and don't know if I'm available, call me and say, hey, are you in the mental space or can I talk to you? Don't automatically assume that I'm having a great day and you don't want to ruin it. I think it's an education thing. And, and that's I, where I want to yeah, go. Not to yeah, cut you off. Yeah. Right there. How, how do we break that constant cycle of feeling like I would be a burden on you or... For whatever the case may be, it's why, communication. like communication. Yeah, and I'm, communication. and that's really it. That's that's why that, that's yeah, when you said it. It's like that's the conversation I want to have. How do we break but, that as but, black people, not but, just women? Yeah, no, I get women it. and men. Women and men. So it's communication, but the communication has to be based around love. So you know, I got I got this new therapist. Uh, shout out to Symphony. I think she's so dope. And um, you know, you know, she's been teaching me some things. Like even in, when you're justified, you still have to respond out of love. Like mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Because you're love. You like that's who you are. You know what I mean? I think like a lot of people are all, always on guard or always defensive towards another party or just I'm feeling from feeling unsafe or judged or whatever the reason may be. But then they end up responding in ways like it, it kind of pushes everybody off, right? Mm-hmm. So all that to say, you know, right now what I practice is speaking with intention and kindness, even if I feel like it's unjust or unright because the only way you can get somebody to hear what you are saying is if you approach it kindly right Mm -hmm. um trust me (laughs) journey okay but what i'm saying is if both sides it would take so what happens is if you feel like guarded or something and you're like i don't want to be a burden you come talk to me and i don't hey you can talk to me okay okay right then now we're in a we're, we're in a we're in a quarrel because nobody reached out right now if you're like i feel like a burden you want to talk to me and i feel like well if you feel like i'm a burden then just don't talk because i'm not about to baby you Mm. that's what a lot of friendships do like i've seen i've seen girls vividly and i only can talk from girls because i'm a female literally their friend will feel like yo i you know i feel away like i feel like you ain't you ain't showing me as much love as this person or you ain't doing you know like you don't treat me like this much a friend and it's like oh well if you feel that way then you must be on some shit so you know you could go your way when really all they had to say no 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 you know you're my girl like i i, I just might have not been thinking of that or you know looking at it that way like you know i'm sorry if i you know if that made you feel away but you you know reassure them right that works both ways like mm-hmm. you know everybody has to be willing to play that tug of war if it's just on one person sometimes it can get strenuous and the person can back down like i'm tired of doing it or whatever but it has to be corrected behavior so do you think and going back to the relationship, is it fair to say that it's a constant trend of both parties being tired, right? Because, yeah, and, sure. I think, and I think for sure. if we can give each other grace, more grace, right? Like hypothetically, the man called the woman more and be like, hey, yeah. be more intentional of, yeah. y'all do want to know yeah. X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z, then maybe, they, maybe their reality wouldn't right. be. Because I feel like a lot of relationships go through that. Like, it's like somebody be crying out for love. And it's like, bro, I'm doing enough, bro. Like, I'm not about to keep doing all that. Like, I like... But in re- retrospect, if that's your person and that's who you choose in, then you kind of have to say, you know, if that's what she needs or that's what he needs, I got to do that. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because some people do 
require a little more love. And some people do need certain things to help them feel loved. And if you're going to take on that responsibility, then you have to fully take it. You don't really kind of get to choose if you don't want to do it or not, because what happens is then you leave like people, not you. I'm saying like in general, people leave that window open for that uncertainty, that unsureness. And you already know relationships fail in uncertainty and unsureness and lack of security. You know what I'm saying? So all that to say is I just feel like if people just gave like if somebody's asking you for something like now, if somebody's just shutting down and just not telling you, it's like, you don't know. But if somebody's like telling you like, this is what I need. Like, I, I don't feel love this way or I don't, I feel like it's okay for somebody to reach out to them and say, okay, well, let me help you here or let me do this here. And if you can't, that's okay. But then you, people need to be honest with that too. I just can't fulfill those I needs. Think, I can't do that. But I think, you know, like again, because we've, this isn't something new. So we got to yeah. understand that we're dealing with years and years, I yeah. mean, hundreds of years of, of backlash and, 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 and baggage from yeah. each other, right? Yeah. From uh, family ties and, and whatever it may be. society is changing. Like, you know, new school don't make it any easier either. Like. Right. So I think, I feel like it has to be this constant grace given. And what I mean mm-hmm. by that is because when I hear you say, if somebody is telling you, if somebody is telling you, and a lot of times, the things you think you're saying, you're not saying, right? That's true. As men That's and women. True. You feel me? So, as, as a lot true. of times, you're crying out for help in but ways that I can't it, understand. understand it. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Real, so, it's though. like, that's I feel real. like if we continue to, if we can really build yeah. this, these relationships and be graceful and, yeah. and really do everything out of love and be yeah. intentional I with. I mean, everybody needs therapy. Yeah. I mean, honest. but no, like, I'm, I'm, I'm really saying that yeah. because I feel like when I hear, I hear the frustration and, yo, I would rather die yeah. on a, like, I hear it, right? But I'm like, yo. I'm not, I'm not looking at it. I'm not looking at it like, yeah, Yeah. I'm like, I'm a joke in the podcast. I'm a joke. But when I sit back and think of it, I'm not looking at it like, damn, she's fucked up. The first thing I'm thinking is, damn, why do she feel like that? You know what I'm saying? And especially if you're saying that your father, that the child's father is a good father. Right. Why is this a reality? Not saying that your reality shouldn't be that, but I'm, I'm like, damn, how can we change that narrative? What, what, like, where do we begin to work on it? What I like about it though, as well, is because just like in generalized, like she was also open that you know, maybe I'm not there yet and maybe Mm -hmm. I'm not that mature and, you know, my pride or my ego may make me feel like that. And I think that if people can also do that, yeah, for sure, that can also speed up some process if you can just say, like, you know, I'm just not there yet to see that what you're doing is enough. Like, you know, or like, you know, like being open to even that side. That's an ongoing fight that we just... just... But I think it's just, it's repetition and continuously giving grace and continually giving patience. And I'm not saying you know that you overextend, but as long as you're doing the best you can, I think that, you know, it, it'll fix it. It'll get better. And it, and I feel like there's, it, it gets better. You know what I mean? Just depending on how much work you want to put in, like, you know, I'm really on an intentional journey right now. So like, you know, I'm just trying to speak with intention as much as I can. Um, because I am also one of them people who sometimes I'll cry out for things and I don't know how to say it. Mm. Like, you know what I'm saying? But I'll, Say in other ways or do it like that. I am one of those people, and, so I understand what that feels like on the opposite end in the forefront. And I think um, that can go into our last segue, yeah. right? I feel like you. Uh, Since it, we it's not just toxic. yeah. It's not just it's not just women. Yeah. It's both of us, and that's why when I pose the question, I try to keep it. No, nah, I get what you uh, did. Balance. It was a great question. And speaking of crying out for things or just not knowing how to communicate. Yeah. We see the Oscars. Yeah. Will Smith. I felt am Willie like, and Willie is me. Yeah, Will Smith, <laughs> Will, Will Smith felt like I am Willie and him Willie is me. and his wife was disrespected and he felt the need to go up and yeah. smack Chris Rock while he was yeah. in the middle of doing a hosting. Yeah. <sighs> that was unpacked. Um, this is unpacked. Do you, you, as a woman, as yeah. a black woman, because we already, and we don't have to talk yeah. about this too much, but we already, we already see the narrative of black women feeling yeah. like they aren't protected. Yeah. Right. So we can't ignore that. Being a black woman, understanding that. How do you, how do you unpack that situation? Do you think he did the right thing? Cause he was protecting his wife. Like. I would be honest with you. You know, yesterday I was in a conversation and I, I, I have a two sided pers- perspective right now because mm-hmm. I just, for the shits and giggles since we're here, you know. So at first, my first response was, um, you know, I, I'm Will. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm one of those people who is not go smack, but like sometimes you just, you so fed up, you don't know what to do. Like, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? So you just do, right? So I don't condone it. You know, I definitely feel bad for the situation on 
all parties because it just was really unfortunate. However, I do think Will was super fed up. Like, and I think he was just more so fed up of being the butt of the joke continuously, him and his wife. You get what I'm saying? Um, now, with that being said, do I think it was right for him to hit Chris Rock? No. However, because... I know who I am as a human. It made Will actually more relatable to me because I seen him have a moment. We look at celebrities all the time, like as if like they're these perfect, perfect beings who don't have any flaws. And then you see him have a moment and everybody's like judging and criticizing. But realistically, I just look at him like, damn, I know that feeling of you work so hard to be this good person. And you, you fail because you're so fucking fed up and you mismanage your emotions. Right. All that to say now, for the kick, for the kikis and the laughs, you know, <laughs> talking to the girls yesterday uh, at the little place, and you know, we laughing because we like, you know, Jada ain't the only one with alopecia. You know, his bitches running around here with no edges all the time. You know, it wasn't really like a real crazy moment. You know what I'm saying? For it to really pop off, it's like okay, he made a GI Jane joke, but like it was like you know, now that's just for shits and giggles, right? However, I don't think Chris Rock understands that the damage he was doing as well. Um, you know, you look and you see him continuously making him and Jada a joke. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, Will's memes are a laughing joke, him crying. And, you know, they continuously attacking his relationship. And I don't know what conversations him and Jada have in the house. You get what I'm saying? Where he's like, I'm trying my best to protect you. I'm trying my best to protect the situation. And where he felt like, okay, I have to do something now because i'm tired like and it keeps coming in my face when am i going to stand up i know you mentioned reading his book and he felt the same as his with his mom not being able to protect her so you know in retrospect i think that everybody need to do better everybody needs to do better from chris rock to will um i think personally um personally i think uh mm, i think they both handled it to the best of their ability and they worked for both of them i'm gonna tell okay. you why I like that. I'm going to tell you why, right? I don't think Will, like, we can't ignore, Will Smith is that nigga next Facts. to Denzel Washington. And it's debated. well, I don't think it's a debate, but um, I would debatably say Denzel won, Will Smith too. Yeah. Having said that, yeah. understanding the fucking, uh, understanding who Will Smith is, I don't think he had to really be reprimanded by anybody before. Like, I mean, not before, but what like, it doing his, like now he, he, he had to resign. You know what I'm saying? Like, he, he, he smacked somebody on TV. So it was, it was a lot of things that was being said publicly yeah. about him. I don't think he's ever witnessed that ever. He's always been, in my experience. You don't think his marriage was going through scrutiny enough to nah, make it, him feel that It was. Same? Nah, for sure. Yeah. But even still, we could only, it, it, nothing was never proven. Nothing was mm -hmm. never, it was just like, yo, even then, I feel like we could look at Will Smith as being a good guy because, like, yo, his wife doing that, he's still there. You know what I'm saying? It's like he's a stand-up guy. He always, at my perspective, Will Smith always looked like a stand-up guy. Yeah, we could joke about him being a simp, yeah. but we should. Look at what Channing Crowder just say. Yeah. Look at Russell Wilson. He winning, yeah. clearly. No matter what you say about these right. niggas, he winning. And he's still so calling I say, him corny. You can call mm -hmm. him corny all you want. Clearly, corny yeah. is the one. You know what I'm saying? But I say that to say, I feel like Will Smith's career always been, like, here. And the moment he smacked Chris Rock, he got humbled mm. in a way that you would not even think about. Do you it. think he's humbled because people spoke out against him? Or do you think he's humbled because of the moment itself? Because, like, both. I don't know. Like, you know, I've seen people say that Chris, like, Will's fine over what's happening. You see his kids posting, and that's how we do it. And, you know, they still stand strong. They post, and, you know, we chose chaos. It seemed like. He's okay with what he may have he, done. He might be okay with that. Do, so do you think that, Matt, like, validation-wise, right? Like we said, will you, if you praise, if you get credit for the comments, and if it's not good, then you, you fall with the comments, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Do you think the comments, like, the, the people speaking out against him matter? No, I don't I mean... I don't know. Um, what I will say is it could, though. We can't ignore that. That's a, a, mm -hmm. a valid part in the situation. On top of it, though, we got situations we don't know if he got to give his Oscar mm -hmm. back. Like this is a this pending, is a, a real investigation. yeah this is a real yeah. situation that came from it. Like, bro, you just smacked somebody on national television. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? You're a grown man. You're Will Smith. It's like it's in 
I can just only imagine that, like, bro, you gotta feel some type of way about it. You wouldn't. He issued an apology. He, he he ain't have to. If he was that secure in what he did, he ain't had to issue an apology. But he clearly feels some. And I feel like yeah. when I say they both did what they had to do, I feel like it was a valuable lesson in the outcome of you smacking yeah. somebody on TV. And yeah. I think Will Smith probably needed that. I think yeah, because I think Even, people do learn in extremes. So like you know, like there's things like you may react to that you probably don't feel good about in the moment but then again you also give yourself enough grace like but you know what i just had a smack a nigga today like mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying not to say it like that like i'm just saying like sometimes niggas need to get smacked like you know not like but like to still feel that satisfaction like i needed to get that off right but it wasn't right so do better next time but i needed to get that so, off i mean like so right so nah so i say that they both it, they both did what was best for each other and i feel like it worked out because one i feel like will smith from this is going to be a lot of it's gonna be a, a better Will Smith, honestly, right? Agreed. So yeah, we Agreed. can look at it and make jokes, right. but I feel like from at the end of yeah. it, at the end of it, it's gonna be a better Will Smith. Chris Rock, I think it might even be a better him, and also shit, his bag went bigger. Yeah, of you course. know what I'm saying? His his ticket sales yeah. sold out, and I'm not saying that that should happen for that. Yeah, but I'm saying I feel like they both did was was best for them, and it worked out for for both of them, so honestly. Can, so is it safe to say that hardships prevail? You, of course, that's all the like, time. You know what I mean? Like you go through hard moments in life some triumphs and then they launch you forward because either way you either get the lesson learned or the blessing behind it like yeah. you know what i mean it's one or the other but even in that right i have another partial opinion and it's like you know i feel like i can't really judge will smith because i've been not yeah. oscars like i ain't no will smith i ain't never been to no oscars but through my life, I've been through situations similar yeah. where I was embarrassed because of my reaction. Yeah. Right? So if somebody was to ask me what I've done that, I don't think I would have done that because I've already had, had to that, learn had, had those moments. through yeah. these embarrassing moments yeah. so many times. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? So it's yeah. like, I don't think I would have reacted like that. But yeah. do I be, am I mad at Will Smith? I'm no, not mad. I'm not mad at Will Smith. Am I partially disappointed? Yeah, because I, I do look at him as a role model. And uh, somebody that... And I think that's why I still look at him as a high stature. Because like I said, for me, it was more of a relatable moment. Yeah. Like as a human, we all make like, mistakes. you know, even being grown and still making mistakes, it's like, damn, Will is Will. And he still makes mistakes. And I could forgive him for that because for sure. I would want to be forgiven for that. And um, again, like teaching people in grace. And, you know, like uh, I forgot who said it, but even when Kanye was on his bill and he was like, I said, help Kanye, not cancel him. I think it's the same thing. I feel like people will rather reprimand you and really give you the hard, like tough love. Like you, if you did this, you absolutely need to go through this because you shouldn't have did that. Instead of some people really just need that handhold. Like I said, like, yo, like that's what people were making fun of. Like Denzel and Tyler Perry being in the back with and helping them to breathe. No, somebody needed to help like re like recenter him because like, that's what people need. Like people need to be, nurtured in their downward spells and i and i promise the people who help them come back up for breath when they fall under like that they really they look to even in a high stature because like thank you for helping me out of that so dark spell as a black woman again yeah how do you feel protected by a black man in a moment like that um, do you do you is it some type of relief when you if i get up and smack somebody is there some type of like yeah thank you or is it like how do you feel protected Honestly, I'm going to be honest with you, right? So I think that, like, I kind of feel the same way about this that I did when Megan Thee Stallion was like, you know, she got shot in her foot and people don't protect black women, right? So I feel like the situation was, was what it was, but I don't really think it should have fell under, like, not protecting black women mm -hmm. or protecting your black woman. Only because that, first of all, this is somebody who's black saying these jokes and you know what I'm saying? So it's kind of like, um, but also because this is to me more of protecting your marriage than just a black woman. So even if like, like I said, I kept saying this, like he, Chris Rock, before he got to Jada and Will, he actually spoke on another white couple mm -hmm. right before that. If he did the same thing and the white guy reacted, it still would have just been protecting your marriage. It wouldn't have been protecting black women. You get what I'm saying? So had another the, the couple before that experienced the same disdain in Chris Rock's comments and the husband came up and did what he did. Um, I feel like it wouldn't have been a protect black woman. I do feel like it was a protect my my foundation and what I stand for as a man, mm -hmm. more so black woman. I felt the same way when 
you know, Tori and Megan kind of went through their thing. And she was like, people don't protect black women, but realistically, you were fucking him. Like, it was a different scenario than that. And I don't like when people take these moments and put it behind that because that's why we're not protected now. Because everybody puts like some weird stigma on it when it's for things like sexual assault and not being heard and our voices going heard. I don't think this was one of that. That's my personal opinion mm -hmm. on that. I do think that it was vividly protecting his assets so what as was a you, man. What was you, what, was you want me to protect you like that in, in a situation? At like the Oscars, um, I'm grown. I, like I said, I don't think, I wouldn't have been like, go smack him. Um, now, I did say, had the conversation been after the Oscars and like, bro, I told you to keep my motherfucking wife's name out your mouth. Like, I'm about, I'm about to smack you. Like, baby, go off. Like, you know what I mean? Please, because the nigga's playing with me. Um, forefront, you know, but if you lost your cool because you was tired of niggas playing with me and playing with you and you went up, I'll go, babe. Like, shit. Thank you. Because these niggas keep playing with us. Blossoms in my flower dress. Like, you know, like, that's kind of like, that's kind of how I look at that. Like, I wouldn't like I wouldn't condone going up there and smack him. But again, being your girl and also giving you grace for your moments. I know what you're frustrated over. I know what made us cry or made us have our hard moments when all these things were being said about us. And I know how fed up we really are. And I already know if niggas keep playing, something's kind of bound to happen eventually. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And I would totally stand beside you for that. Like, you know what I mean? No, I understand. But I wouldn't be like, go smack get Get the fuck up on the thing. Go yeah. smack him. And right I think now, I just I think we um yeah. you know as a as a whole, just to be honest, I think we just need to do more mental push ups. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like and I yeah. say that because at the end of the day, like we do have different realities. And yeah. even hearing hearing you break it down, I'm like, I'm thinking like, damn, at what point do you think like damn I I was a part I was partially the reason why a lot of these jokes has been made. I was partially the reason why, et cetera, et cetera. You get what I'm saying? Who Jada? And I, yeah, and I feel like um so I, as you feeling yeah. like you should be protected. At, at some point, it's like he protecting his damn self, too. But but I, that's why I said I think he was more respecting his manhood. Yeah, Because at for the sure. end of the day, at the end of the day, even if my wife is at the core of all these things happening, I'm still a man first. And, yeah. you know, that's my wife. So you're not finna think you could disrespect somebody who's next to me. No, 100%. You know what I'm saying? Without it getting to but me. But that's why I said so I So that's why I said, like, I think her accountability is necessary. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. However, I still don't think that takes away from his manhood and what he felt like he wanted to do nah, on sure. his quote unquote but, man time. But no, that's why I said we all need to do mental push-ups because yeah. even like you shouldn't feel like, um, you know what I'm saying? Like you got to go to that level because somebody hurts your feelings. At the end of the day, that's what it's about. Yeah. And it's comedy. Yeah. No matter how you look at it, you think it's inappropriate. I'm not yeah. going to take nobody reality from them. Yeah. But if we continue to work on our mental, certain things won't yeah, and I think get, that's a get personal, us to go to that, definitely that level. A, a personal journey, you know what I'm saying? Um, as somebody who's going on it, you know what I'm saying? I just think that, you know, you have to train yourself on how to react and to respond. And I, that's, the, that's the one thing that I did feel heavily about this situation. I just feel like, you know, because it didn't matter at the end of the day, all the work he put in to get to the Oscars or what he did to get the Oscar. Right now, everybody's talking about this, but nobody's talking about the pain, the blood, the sweat, the tears that went into making this movie it's and, overlooked. And now it's overlooked all because he reacted regardless of how he reacted. No, like that should never take away from your special moment. And if that's what it takes to personally develop, to make sure that I cannot react in these ways because I don't want people to hold it as my character now I could be the best person in the world I could do all these good deeds and in the minute that I react they're going to say that's who I am and right. I think that's not fair for anybody to have to undergo I'm a person who has lived it has been in it and I think that I solely feel for Will due to that more than anything no facts it's not about the money it's not about the people, what they saying, it's more so like, damn, this nigga really worked his ass off for that Oscar. You know what I mean? And it's being overshadowed by, you know, how he. That's reacted. why we gotta do these mental push-ups, man. So, question: What, where do we go from here? Like, what's next? Like, how do what what what's going on? I don't know. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if it's. You know, we might come back. We might not. I don't know. We're still like just kind of. You know, we're still figuring it out. Like, just you know, even just wanting to be solid in your foundation like you know we talked about that we've had a rocky start and then we still you know went on and you know just now it's being grown and just trying to do things the right way you want the foundation clean and 
you know, stable and you don't want things to deter that, whether it's comments or people or, you know, just your relationship being in the limelight. Like nobody wants to have to deal with that. So I think like I don't really want to put any pressure on it. It's just kind of how we feel if, you know, next week we want to get up and we want to record. So be it. We did it today. It's not like it's hard. You know, shout out to Jazz and Tilly for being here to make it happen. You know, I'm always here for the team. Shout out to Chrissy for making it happen. You know, because at the end of the day, you know, if we want to get up and record, we can, you know, it's, it's, it, it, it I don't want to put any pressure on myself. Like uh, that's kind of where I'm at. Like no pressure. If I'm coming, I'm coming. If I'm sleeping, I'm sleeping. Like, you know, so like, and I'm okay with that. Like, cause I just don't think it's, it's not y'all business, honestly. No, nah, facts. I, I respect that. I think, um, where you at? You know, yeah. I, uh, I'm, I'm really, I'm, if I had to answer, it'd be us. Right, like okay. that's where I'm at. You know what I'm saying? Because I just want to make sure we good. Yeah. Like in in really in real yeah, life. Yeah. In think real life. We yeah. prayed about it. You know what I'm saying? And um, yeah. and honestly, like Definitely if you somebody that prayer. yeah, if you somebody that pray shit, pray for us too. You feel me? Yeah. Because like that's where I'm at. I want I want us to be straight enough that we can get up yeah. here on a weekly basis and talk. We yeah. can and fuck this. Not even here. Like we can be able to yeah. talk to each other. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Mm-hmm. We can talk through our, our 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 um hardships and things like that. That's where I'm because at. Because then when we get on here, it's even it's just it. It shines. Like, it, it shows. Shi- it, it shows exactly. You can see the work. You can see what's being put in, and I think like that's kind of even before like stepping back. Like I, I, I didn't want it to show what we were dealing with behind the scenes, um, because you can see it. Like you know, you know when people are shining. You know when they're dealing, and you know we was dealing. Nah, like, for you sure. Know? So nah, this well. was definitely fun. I definitely missed it. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, what we got going on? I, you know, I, well, you know, the girls is partially coming back. Me and Diamond definitely have a segment we're finna drop. So you could definitely look out for that. It's called Let's Check In with the girls, you know. So that'll be dropping soon. So you can still catch up with the girls. You know, I know they've been asking for the girls too. They was asking for Gemini Scorpio podcast, but they was asking for the girls too. <laughs> so I sure. wanted to make sure I threw that out there. And you still doing your thing. Got your interviews popping, podcasts popping. Yeah. You know, so you can still check us out. We still. Got things coming. So yes, we're all that shit, man. At Healer Bay underscore. You already know the fucking vibes. You already know. <laughs> Podcast Bay. Back in the building. Y'all know I used to rap on a beat before. <laughs> Come on, y'all know. Yeah, man. <laughs> follow me at Mr. Underscore J Hill. Follow us at uh, Mr. J Hill Network. So yes, we're going to have like all the that content used to be there. the Gemini Scorpio podcast page. I'm just saying. Yeah, it was. But whatever. It's always shade, but whatever. Fuck with us. Uh, subscribe to the YouTube page. Um, this won't be 75 because we ain't coming episode. like that. We just yeah. gonna 75 going to be an episode. Yeah, yeah. So, you know what I'm saying? Because he ain't really really was trying to let me get all my jokes off here. Y'all know I'm a comedian like in real life, in real time. So, you know, that's my partial job. I'm really Chris Rockin' out here if anybody wants to You Chris know. Rockin' out here? Not the way Will rocked him, but in, in retrospect, yeah, you know. All right, man. Gemini Scorpio <laughs> Podcast, man. It's a wrap. We out. Thanks you. <laughs>